Hello and welcome to today's lesson on using sources in MLA format. The first thing you need to know about using sources in MLA format is how to create a works cited page. Anytime you quote or paraphrase or use information that belongs to someone else, you must provide a source in your works cited page. Let me show you how to set that up. The works cited page is the last page of your document so your last name and page number should still appear in the top right hand corner of the page and then on the very first line you type works cited not references works cited and then you hit enter use the citation machine to create entries for your works cited page that's at www.citationmachine.net now you're using MLA format so you choose that at the citation machine <clears throat> you're quoting your textbook so you choose book and then you're only quoting a chapter from your textbook so you choose cite a chapter the first chapter uh, in the book that you can use is vote yes on the bottled water ban This is not by a specific person, but rather by the staff of the Harvard newspaper. So you put Crimson Staff in the last name section. There's only one author, so you remove the second one. It comes from your textbook, Practical Argument, which is the third edition. It's published by Bedford St. Martins in 2017. And this article is on pages 672 to 673. There's no annotation, you click Create Citation. Now the Citation Machine creates the entry for your works cited page for you and puts it in the proper format, but you can't cut and paste it or else you'll end up with that yellow background on your works cited page. So you click the Copy and Paste button and wait. Uh, and then you go over to your works cited page and hit control V. Unfortunately, it doesn't keep the formatting, so you're going to have to change the text and size back to Times New Roman 12, and then format it so that every line after the first line is indented five spaces. The first line is flush with the left margin, every line after that is indented five spaces. Now let's say you were going to use the other chapter in your book you go back to MLA choose book choose create a chapter cite a chapter and the chapter title of this one is bottled water is silly but so is banning it this one has an author his name is Charles Fishman He's the only author, so you can remove this second section. The title of the book, again, is Practical Argument. It's the third edition. It's published by Bedford St. Martins in 2017. And this article is pages 673 to 676. Click Create a Citation and again click copy and paste you'll have to format it change the font and the size and then indent every line after the first one now you need to use four sources in this essay on bottled water. So let's say you found a source on the internet. Uh, you found this article on the Huffington Post, plastic water bottles causing flood of harm to our environment. You can take the URL of this website and copy it. Go back to the citation machine, choose website, paste the URL into the website form and click search websites. The citation machine will find the website for you. Here it is. You select that one and it shows you all the information that it found about that website. Click final step, enter any 
information that's missing, none is missing, click Create Citation, and again, it creates the citation for you for that website. Click Copy and Paste, go over to your Works Cited page, click Control V to enter it, change the font and size to Times New Roman 12, and indent every line after the first one. Now this, the articles that we looked up just happen to be in alphabetical order, C for Crimson Staff, F for Fishman, and S for Shriver, but um, if they weren't then you would have to reorder your works cited page so that the articles were listed in alphabetical order. The works cited page provides enough information for your reader to find your original source if they need to go back to it and look for something for themselves. Now we'll talk about using the source in your essay. If you're paraphrasing or summarizing sources, you must, must, must begin by introducing your source so your reader knows when someone else's ideas are beginning. In the article, Vote Yes on the Bottled Water Plan, the Crimson Staff urges readers to vote to ban bottled water on the Harvard campus to save the environment and improve student lives, page 672. Now, this is not a direct quote from the Crimson Staff article. It's not in quotations. So the reader needs to know when someone else's ideas begin. So you do that by introducing the source. Then you summarize, and then you end with the page number that you summarize from page 672 and notice that the period comes after the parenthetical citation and not before. You can also quote sources and when quoting sources you may begin by introducing the source but you don't have to. For example in the article vote yes on the bottled water plan the Crimson staff argues that quote the referendum's measures would also improve students daily lives end quote parentheses 672 close parentheses period since you introduced the crimson staff the uh, reader already knows what source it came from so all they need in the parentheses is the page number and again the period comes after the parentheses if you didn't want to start if you with the source if you wanted to jump right into the quote you could Quote, single-use plastic water bottles represent one of the most easily obviated threats currently plaguing the environment. Close quote. In this case, you have to include the source in the parenthetical citation, so Crimson Staff, and then the page number, 672, followed by the period. Notice that there's no comma or any other, any other punctuation between Crimson Staff and 672, just a space, and again the period comes after the parenthetical citation. Uh, quotes that are longer than four type lines must be blocked, which means indented five spaces. So for example, in the article, bottled water is silly, but so is banning it, Fishman claims there is fresh burst of controversy about bottled water on college campuses, specifically around whether bottled water should be sold in the dining halls of U.S. and Canadian universities. Last week, the University of Vermont became the latest of 15 campuses in the U.S. and Canada to ban the sale of bottled water, page 674. When you use a block quote, the indent, the five-space block, signals to the reader that this is a quote, so you do not need to use quotation marks around this quote. Uh, and uh, in this case, the parenthetical citation comes after the period. Since we introduced the name in the, of the article and the author, all we need in the parenthetical citation is the page number. But like shorter quotes, if you don't begin by introducing the source, you must include the author's last name in the parenthetical citation. Now this is the same quote. It's blocked, so there's no quote marks. The uh, period comes before the parenthetical citation, and the parenthetical citation contains both the author's last name and the page number. Sometimes you need to edit quotes to leave out or add a word. You cannot change the meaning of the quote, but you can change the quote in order for it to make more sense in your paper. If you're going to leave out a part of a quote, 
you take its place with the use of ellipses marks, which are these three periods separated by spaces. For example, the environmental contrail from bottled water, which I wrote about in a magazine story which took me both to Fiji and Poland Springs, Maine, is astonishing. Fishman, page 675. Now, if you didn't want to put Fishman's aside in there, his parentheticals, you could leave it out and put ellipses marks in its place. The environmental contrail from bottled water is astonishing. Fishman, page 675, period. Likewise, you can add your own words to a quote only for clarification, not to change the meaning, and in this case you use square brackets. So according to the Crimson staff, the referendum's measures would also improve students' daily lives, page 672. It might not be clear to the reader which referendums they mean, so you could add, according to the Crimson staff, the referendum's measures to ban bottled water would also improve students' daily lives, page 672. That's all for today, but if you need to get beyond these basics uh, and you have questions, your textbook contains two chapters, chapter 9 and 10, on summarizing, paraphrasing, quoting, and synthesizing sources, and on documenting sources using MLA. For more complex questions, you may want to use the Purdue University Online Writing Lab, or OWL, uh, and there's the URL for it, and it can answer all kinds of esoteric questions on using MLA. I hope you learned something today.